potatoes, no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, we're shaking it loose. We are shaking it loose. There's no more shackles, no more chains, no more Freedom is coming to us. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and see. And the Lord says to you, I am looking for the ones who will break the rules of religion and become more undignified than this, says the Spirit of the Lord. I say break off religion. I say break off religion for the scepter of the king is extended to you from heaven and no man can stop what I'm doing for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm looking for the ones who will become more undignified in the marketplace more undignified at your job. I say let that lion roar and become more undignified than this. The Lord, I hear a word specifically over some people and the Lord says that there has been heavy oppression for 15 years that you have batted your head against the door to break through in and the Lord says that the reason you can't break through 15 years of this oppression is because there's no handle on the side you're looking at but the Lord says that the key has been in the lock on the back side for 15 years and if you would quit batting your head against the door the Lord says, this is a week I will open it from the inside out. So the Lord says, submit to what I am asking you to do this week and watch me turn it inside out for you. Wow. What made Mordecai special was that he had a watchman's heart. We see it all the way through the story. Mordecai watched over Esther. When Esther's parents died, he took her into his home as his own daughter to watch over her and care for her. When she was taken to the harem, he gave her careful instructions on how to behave and what to do. While she was in the harem, we're told he walked back and forth in front of the courtyard of the harem every day to learn how Esther was and what was happening to her. She was his daughter. He loved her, and so he was in intercession for her as she was in the harem. And after she became queen, Mordecai was careful to, to stay in communication with her. So he was a watchman over Esther, but he also watched over the king. You know, positioned at the city gate, he heard everything that was going on, and seated at the palace gate... He overheard a plot to kill the king. So he went to Esther, let her know, and the plot was thwarted. But he not only watched over Esther and over the king, he watched over the Jewish people. When he heard of Haman's plot, he sent word to Esther and urged her to act. And then when Haman's plot was overthrown, Mordecai was given Haman's position and it was Mordecai who actually wrote the decree that saved the Jews by countering Haman's evil decree. And then we're told it was out of respect for Mordecai that the Persian provincial, uh, provincial officials assisted in protecting the Jews. And the book of Maccabees, Purim, is actually called the Day of Mordecai. Mordecai was the one God used to make it all happen. But Mordecai not only watched over Esther, not only watched over the king, not only watched over the Jewish people, he watched over his own family line. See, Mordecai's family history had been tarnished by a terrible incident. Mordecai was a descendant of the house of Saul. 
Israel's first king. But Saul suffered the humiliation of having the kingship torn from his family because of his disobedience. In 1 Samuel 15, God had commanded Saul to attack the Amalekites and utterly destroy them, but Saul disobeyed. That was an event was a humiliation for every member of the family. Down through the years, they, uh, every member of the family knew they were supposed to be the royal line. They were supposed to be royalty in Israel, but they lost that position because of Saul. But see, Mordecai vindicated his family by finally overcoming one of Israel's oldest enemies, the Amalekites. <laughs> 